This is Look West, a podcast from California's Assembly Democrats. Hi, I'm Henry Lowe with Look West. There are more than a million veterans in California. As we honor veterans this month, we want to learn more about California's role in assisting veterans. DCO producer and a veteran himself, John Patterson, worked on this episode. Hi, John. Hi, Henry. So, who did you talk to? I sat down with Assemblywoman Pilar Chavo. She's the new chair of the Military and Veterans Affairs Committee and Jeff Stabile, a veteran from Santa Clarita. They told me what California is doing, isn't doing, and what might be done in the future. You were in the military, and thank you for your service. Did anything they say surprise you? Uh, Yes, I was surprised at the amount of services available to veterans that they don't know about. I sat down with Assemblywoman Chavo in the Look West studio, and Jeff Stabile joined us via Zoom from Santa Clarita. Welcome, and thanks to both of you for joining us on Look West. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. Glad to be here. So, Assemblywoman Chavo, tell us a bit about your background and connection to the military. So um, I was so excited to be appointed as the chair of the Military and Veterans Committee. Um, My dad is a Vietnam vet, and so he actually um, is disabled because of it. He's suffered cancer. He's on his third fight with cancer right now, actually, because when he was in Vietnam, he would fix the planes that would spray Agent Orange. And so he patched up all the bullet holes and would be drenched sometimes in Agent Orange himself. Um, So when I was young, he contracted Hodgkin's disease because of that, um, and they connected it to his time in the service and and connection with um, contact with Agent Orange. And um, and then in my 20s, he got it again, and now he's fighting cancer now for the third time. So um, we're, it's one of the reasons I, am, I love the VA so much. The VA has saved my dad's life more times than I can count at this point. And, um, you know, and at that time when, we were, when I was young, we didn't have health insurance. And so I don't know what we have, would have done if he didn't have access to the VA health care. Um, and then my brother also is a veteran. He was in the Iraq War. Um, so we have a, a family um, that served. And, um, and I know, you know, the toll that that can take on a family and also how important it is to make sure that we support um, veterans once they come home. Jeff, can you tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, well, I was uh, in the uh, U.S. Air Force uh, 1963 to 67 during Vietnam. Um, and uh, I was a judge in the jet engine technician on B-52 and KC-135. Uh, and uh, uh, it was, it, it, uh, it's nice to hear that the VA took care of uh, the assembly woman's dad because uh, remember when veterans were returning home during that time, uh, they weren't welcome very well. And uh, I think it was in 2018 was the first time I ever hear, heard Welcome Home. Uh, but uh, that's the year that I started working with the uh, the Abolitary with the Santa Clarita Veteran Service Collaborative. And uh, I've just seen how important it is that uh, veterans be taken care of. And uh, since they're long-term effects of uh, their serving, wherever they did, uh, whether it be uh, from the mental health side or from the physical health side. So uh, it's just something I've been doing th- for the last five years. Um, thank you for your service, Jeff. Um, Assemblywoman Chavo, as chair of the Assembly Military and Veterans Affairs Committee, what are the primaries, primary areas of interest in California? You know, California has been doing actually a lot of great work around supporting um, our veterans. And for me, because of my background, I've also worked a lot in homelessness and I've seen too many veterans. Um, I actually just had a conversation with one, a Navy vet who lives in my town um, this weekend who's been in and out of housing and I'm trying to get housed in some veteran housing that um, that the organization I co-founded fought for in my neighborhood that's going to be for veterans um, primarily. 
And um, so for me, you know, I've been talking with our staff about really focusing some of our uh, future work around homelessness and services and making sure that we're really addressing the veterans who are the most in need in our communities. Um, so we actually are going to be hosting a um, a hearing that's coming up in Santa Clarita. Our, we're going to have a remote hearing for the uh, the veterans and military um, committee that is going to happen to talk about that exactly, to talk about some recent programs that have come online, to hear, you know, what has been working, what are some of the numbers, how many folks are being helped so that we can really see, you know, how these dollars are going to use and how people are really being impacted. Um, and then we're also going to highlight some of the organizations that are doing the work on the ground locally. We have some great organizations in Santa Clarita in our district that are doing um, that are doing work. The the housing um, permanent supportive housing development that I mentioned earlier is one of them that we'll talk about the work that they're doing as they're getting online and. Um, Homes for Families, which I know Jeff is very familiar with, is a phenomenal program that helps veterans get into their first home. Um, and it has wraparound services that go with it too, art therapy, financial literacy, all kinds of things that really stabilize families. And they have incredible statistics on how many of their kids graduate high school and go to college, how, how many folks um, kind of move up the economic ladder by doing that. And so um, I am excited to really focus in those areas around homelessness, housing, um, health care obviously is, is close to my heart, but really making sure that veterans are getting access to the programs that we've made a lot of investment in in California. But I think you know, sometimes we may have great programs, but people just don't know about them. And so we were, we're really trying to get the word out as well about some of the programs people can access. Thank you. So, Jeff, just a, I guess a follow-up question to that. How do you think we as California have been doing of getting the word out and helping the veterans with the homelessness issues? I think um, definitely the uh, word is getting out. There's um, uh, a number of... Uh, messages, emails uh, that we get from the VA that we pass on to our members. Um, and they're uh, trying to get more uh, county advocates to work with veterans. Um, it's been tough this last year. They've been understaffed. This is the uh, what we call the uh, VSOs, the veteran service officers, and they're all over California. Um, but they're the ones that can initiate claims and things for the uh, the veterans and their families. And uh, they've been working to add staff. I know that the Veterans Administration has been working to add staff also. Uh, yeah, the different the, the different facilities that we have uh, here. The uh, Santa Clarita and down in LA, and uh, I give them credit; they have a, a a tough job because there are so many veterans now. As the assemblywoman mentioned about, uh, I think with Agent Orange now the PACT Act, which is talking about the toxic uh, exposure, uh, there are a lot of veterans that are now applying or reapplying for claims, and uh, the workload is just. Uh, increased tremendously um, on the VA, and I know they're doing everything they can to assist in getting to see the veterans and their families as quickly as possible. And right now, we have more spouses coming in because of the age of the veterans and then adding their conditions. Um, we're seeing more and more spouses coming in about uh, survivors' benefits so uh, the the VA uh, is you know critically important to uh, the survival of the veterans and their families. And if I can just jump in, you know, Jeff has been an incredible advocate to make sure that there's a dedicated veteran service officer, a VSO, in Santa Clarita for years. He's been really pushing for that, and he reached out to our office. 
um, soon after I got elected to really kind of try to help move the ball forward and and um, through you know his advocacy and our office engaging, we were able to get a dedicated VSO officer one day a week. We're trying for more, um, but at least we have one day a week now um, within five days of us really starting to work together. So we were really excited to um, to be able to make that happen. There's so many veterans who live in our community in, San, in the Santa Clarita part of the district especially, and so making sure that they really had – um, access to a VSO who is the one who really connects people to the VA and all of the services and supports that folks can get there. It, it just, to, just to add on to that, we started working in 2018 trying to get a VSO. Uh, now, because of the staffing situation, they would have to transfer VSOs to different areas. So we really never had a dedicated person. And yet now we're the third largest city in L.A. County. And we were just trying to try it. And finally, I said, let's go to some of the, the key sources. So we called the Assemblyman's office, called a number of the public. And I remember um, Gabby Urella, who was the uh, federal liaison, came over and sat down and spent an hour and a half with me just talking, asking me questions. And as the Assemblyman mentioned, within five days, we had a dedicated VSO to Santa Clarita, which was amazing. What I couldn't do in close to five years <laughs> with the help of the assemblywoman, we got it within five days, and we are now up to 20 to 25 people a day coming in to see that VSO on Mondays. And uh, there's definitely going to be a need for a second one. And you know they've just hired four more people, but that's just with one VSO, 20, 20, 20 to 25 a day for somebody to visit that VSO for claims. Yeah, there's such a need. Yeah, special special shout out to Gabby, my staff, who's relentless. <laughs> well, is, um, I'm sure there are lots of other cities that uh, would look forward to hopefully having the same opportunities for a VSO and someone dedicated to work with the veterans to get the, you know, the help that they need. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess one of the things, me being a veteran, when I got out was – trying to get reacquainted to the workforce. I had a really hard time uh, translating my skill set that I learned in the military mm -hmm. to a civilian job. Um, what do you feel that California will do to uh, help veterans to reacclimate to the community, to getting a job? I'm also on the California Workforce um, Development Board. And um, there is a a big focus there to really make sure that the jobs that we're connecting people with are really high road jobs. They're good jobs with benefits, with retirement. Um, and so, you know, making sure that those are accessible to veterans is something that's really important to me too. And making sure I'm connecting these two areas that I'm working in. Um, and, you know, and also, like I said, in with our focus really around the you know, people who are experiencing homelessness and who really are in the most need. A lot of the housing that I'm focused on supporting and moving forward and, and creating and housing that I mentioned I supported in my own community is permanent supportive housing where they have full-time case managers to help people get job training if they need it, get on their feet and figure out what that skill set is to be able to, you know, get work, get on their feet and really kind of stabilize their life. Um, so, you know, those are, those are areas that I'm really focused on working to make sure that we're supporting veterans and getting them into not only jobs, but good jobs that are really life sustaining. When I got out of the, uh, the service, um, there was no real handoff to what's going to be going on in, in civilian life. Uh, I think the military is doing a, a better job nowadays of it, but we still have young people that get discharged and come in and I ask them what has uh, what they what was your MOS in the service as a military occupational specialty and some of them could come in and say oh well I was uh, the clerk in supply I said okay and he says you know I said did you check in inventory and they said yeah I said okay so you have experience in inventory control do you 
that you checked to see it was the right item and it was in good condition, et cetera. I mean, yes, you know, we did that. Okay. Will you have quality control experience? And were you actually moving parts around? Yeah. Well, you've got logistics. Okay. So there's three areas. So a number of these young people can say, you know, I was just doing this and you know, just a small job. When you talk to them, you start developing, look, these are the different things you can look at. You can look at logistics. You can look at supply. You can look at quality control. Look through all of those types of jobs applications because you apply. So it's important, and that's what, what we do, is when the veterans come in, we've had a number of younger veterans come in, and all we do is say, how can we help you? And you just tell us, and then we'll start referring or providing resources or set you up with a VA benefit specialist. Uh, and it's important that we let the members of the military know your training is important, is very critical. But don't limit yourself to thinking you can just do one thing. There are several things that you can do. And, uh, um, and I, was, I was fortunate that my training uh, with aircraft, um, I got my first job over the phone two months after I got out of the service because of what I did in the military because they considered it six years experience when I was really only in for four. Uh, so I was one of the lucky ones. Uh, what is California going to do for assemb the assembly woman? Um, as far as addressing the mental health for veterans and getting them the help that they need. So there's been, um, huge, huge investments in mental health in the last couple budgets, um, which is really encouraging and I think is, you know, honestly still rolling out because it was billions of dollars that doesn't roll out overnight. Um, so I think we're still, you know, going to continue to see the impacts of additional resources available for folks. Um, there also was a bond that we just passed out of the legislature that's over a billion dollars um, specifically for veterans and um, around housing, mental health, a number of um, resources and services for folks. And so there's, um, you know, ongoing really a commitment to make sure that we're investing and supporting veterans. Um, <clears throat> we have some great programs in our community that are doing um, PTSD, you know, related therapy with folks, um, equine therapy. I just went to an event with Jeff a couple weekends ago where, um, you know, veterans have an opportunity to work with horses and, and have that you know, help them through their process to to really address PTSD that people are experiencing and other mental health issues, which has been really powerful just talking to some of the veterans who are there. So um, we're really proud that we have some great programs and resources in our community that we're working to get more um, resources to as well. And, um, you know, and that California really has been prioritizing and making an investment here. But you know, it's always a challenge for folks to really connect with those services. And so I think um, the more those programs roll out, we have a real, you know, we, we need to do a much better job of making sure that people know about them and know how to access them um, and get the help that, that folks need. Um, Jeff, the same question for you. Um, and I know I read, I think, an article on you about that you were on uh, – a veterans uh, suicide, I don't know if it was a hotline or a lot to do with that. Um, how do you think we as California can help with that? I'm part of a, a suicide um, wellness and post-pension um, community that is uh, run through um, the gentleman at the College of the Canyons, um, and we, we meet monthly. Uh, right. Uh, and just talk about suicides. Um, but we have in our collaborative, our vets, our veteran center, uh, we're seeing more and more people coming in asking either directly or indirectly, as you talked about, asking for mental health services. 
<laughs> so we try and connect. Fortunately, we have Mental Health LA America has an office right next to us that we can walk right next door if we uh, need to have somebody do an intake. Uh, we've also talked with um, the Vet Center, which is a VA operation, which are uh, former service members that are licensed social workers to hopefully get one of them up to our office one day a week as we're having the VA benefit specialists come in. We, we need somebody there because we're all volunteers, so we're not trained in mental health, uh, but we can kind of recognize when there's an issue just due to uh, us being, uh, a number of us being ex military um, people are a lot more comfortable coming in and starting to talk about things that went on during their time in their service that they've never talked with their families about. But they feel com comfortable talking with another veteran, and that gives us the opportunity to you know, um, help them uh, with a resource or something that will address that issue. Uh, we also work with the uh, well, that is the County Sheriff's Department MET team, which is a mental evaluation team. And that's a group that when a veteran, well, when someone is having an issue and it seems like it's a mental health issue, uh, rather than sending an armed sheriff out there, they'll send a MET team, which specializes in uh, working with mental health issues to talk with them. And there's a specific deputy that's assigned to handle the veterans. And so we work with the MET team and allow them into our office. And we have a uh, private office that they're allowed, they come in and whatever time, if it's late at night, they just give me a call and we'll open it up and they can go and use that and talk with veterans. So we're getting more and more uh, veterans coming in asking or some assistance with mental health. So it's extremely important that as many resources as possible, you help train and hire well, well, mental health specialists that we can use as referrals uh, and in addition uh, to go into the VA system. One last question, and it's for both of you. Is California a leader in veterans' issues? You know, before becoming chair of the committee, I didn't realize what a, a leader California is. We've actually seen veteran homelessness go down since 2014. There's been a, a huge investment. Um, you know, the, the housing that I talked about, permanent supportive housing for veterans in my community that I fought for, I've been talking with them about, um, you know, making how we can help to, to make sure that they're able to fill the rooms. And they've been actually having a hard time finding veterans who need housing right now, which I guess is a good problem to have. But, um, you know, so we're, we're doing all that we can to connect, you know, resources and, um, and providers in the LA area with them to make sure that any local veterans who are in need of housing and experiencing homelessness are getting connected. But, um, but I think it's, you know, it, it it really shows that we've made a lot of progress. We're absolutely not there yet. We have too many veterans experiencing homelessness. It shouldn't even be a thing. Um, but it was heartening to know that there has been a lot of progress in this area and a lot of people have been getting housed. And the veterans that I have worked with over the years um, in my organization that was doing homelessness advocacy, people have stayed housed. You know, I, I encountered a veteran on, of all days, the 4th of July, who had just fallen into homelessness, just lost his housing. Um, and we immediately connected him up with the VA at that time. And he's, I just, you know, talked to him last week and he's been consistently housed since then. He hasn't found permanent housing, which is what I'm trying to help make happen. But, um, but the fact that he did not fall back into homelessness, I think is also um, a level of success. And so, that's, I think, why I feel like a lot of people don't know about the successes that we've had and all the programs that we have been funding and supporting and creating um, because there is still great need and there is still a lot of, you know, 
um, lack of information for folks who don't know about all of these programs. So um, I'm really, you know, proud and um, excited about the work that we're doing, but excited to make sure that we expand it even more and really, you know, let's just end veteran homelessness. That's what I would like to see happen. I think California um, provides a lot of services uh, for veterans. Um, what I'd love to see is a promotional campaign from the state kind of letting people know what they are doing. You know, I think the state should talk about here the things that we're doing and put out like a public service kind of campaign, let people know, because once that happens, then we start to receive a lot of calls. And people say, I heard about or I read about this. How can we kind of help? And what's important, the other thing is, you know, from the homeless standpoint, well, there are a number of veteran members of the community that use our food bank, and that has increased dramatically in like the last year and a half. And some of them say, boy, if it wasn't for your food bank, you know, it'd be tough for me to decide what I'm going to pay and how I'm going to uh, keep up with my rent and things like that. Uh, so while it's been really doing good things, we have to do a little bit more because there are a number of people because of the economic situation that are probably right on the tipping edge of whether they can be housed or unhoused. And a lot of little things can help and not, uh, um, the more that the state can do to help them in those situations, uh, the better it's going to be. And so it sounds like uh, we have lots of good uses for the money that's been allocated for this budget. Um, Before we wrap up this episode, Assemblywoman Shabo, I know you have an announcement about a veteran your office is honoring this month. I just wanted to share that... Um... We are very excited and honored to recognize Jeff as our Veteran of the Year this year. And um, as you can hear from this conversation, he's an amazing advocate in the community and has been an incredible leader for veterans and really, um, you know, just has one of the biggest hearts I have ever encountered around making sure that veterans have really the support and resources Um and access to programs uh, that folks need. And so we're very grateful to have him in our community and happy to um, provide him some recognition that he is very well-deserved um, and looking forward to honoring him in person um, when we're back in, you know, back in the district. Um, so just want to, you know, give, give, give a big shout out to Jeff and just you know, say thank you so much for your amazing work, your advocacy, um, and ongoing dedication to the veterans in our community. Well, um, thank you very much for the for the honor. Um, and it it is this is probably one of the more rewarding periods in my life. Uh, I know I look old, but I'm really young. <laughs> I am uh, really honored to. Uh, receive that recognition and uh, feel very strongly about doing whatever I can as long as I can uh, for the community and for the uh, uh, military and their families um, for years to come. And with the help of the assembly will in their office, um, we're going to be able to do that because they've been so supportive and so helpful ever since she came into office. So it's, it's really appreciated. Thank you to Assemblywoman Pilar Chavo and Jeff Stabile for being part of this episode of the Look West podcast. I'm John Patterson. Thank you for listening. The Look West podcast is produced by California Assembly Democrats. When you think of Californian politics, remember to look west. <laughs> <laughs>